Hello, everyone, and welcome to Black Girls Getting Their Shift Together. Today, we have a special guest. You may know her. Me. We're going to keep it short and simple tonight. We're going to talk about nine things to notice that you can look at you within yourself throughout the day. But before we do that, we're going to go over this intro. <laughs> For the queen, sisters manifesting their dreams. Get your cream by any means and being with self esteem. Beauty supreme and Buddha walk so mean. The way you fit in them jeans, you eat your cornbread and greens. Dance or a doctor, red wine or vodka. Redesign your spot and redefine your mantra. Retwist your locks and realign your chakras. Doing your squats and getting closer to God, huh? Brunching with your squad or taking a girl's trip. Adjust your crown, you guys give to the world, sis. Celestial body, drink your water. Meditate, sun kiss God is heavenly order. Levitate, tribe of Ashanti, black girl magic, melanin popping, whether you ratchet or lavish, whether you bougie or savage, you a gift and a treasure, you got to love a black girl getting a shift together, black girls are getting a shift together, these black girls getting a shift together, man, these black girls are getting a shift together, these black girls getting a shift together, dog. And we're back. Yes, tonight we are talking about different different things to notice throughout the day as you navigate. And, you know, we go through life so much on autopilot and go, 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 go. And we're already five steps ahead, even a year down the road, three months down the road, three hours ahead, as opposed to staying grounded in what you're doing in the present moment. So we are going to talk about nine things to notice throughout your day. But before that, I want you to like, subscribe, comment, share this video. If this is a replay, make sure to type replay in the comment section. And also let me know where you're tuning in from. I love to hear where my listeners are coming in from. Also, Make sure and join the private Facebook group. I'm going to drop the link in the comment section box as well so that we can, even though you all hear me, this way we can take the conversation beyond the podcast. We can talk about it in the private Facebook group. All right, let's get into it. All right. So when we talk about grounding ourselves, I'm going to read a couple, a few definitions. And so what does grounding mean? Grounding is called earthing, or it is a therapeutic technique that involves doing activities that ground yourself to the earth or within. And this practice relies on earthing and grounding yourself so that you are in the present moment. Remember what I said earlier, how we're so busy going uh, five, three hours ahead of time as opposed to looking at what's going on in the here and the now. And so, when we talk about grounding techniques, grounding techniques are exercises that help you refocus on the present moment to distract yourself from anxious feelings. And you can use these grounding techniques to help create space from distressing feelings in nearly any situation, but they're especially helpful for improving anxiety. Let me know in the comment section Does anyone, has anyone experienced anxiety? I know I have a lot of times when I experience anxiety is because I am overthinking, which could be a symptom of anxiety. I'm overthinking, I'm oversharing, I'm just over, over, over as opposed to being, 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 if that makes sense. Nine things to notice throughout the day once you figure out your grounding. Oh, before we get into that, one technique that I do when I try to practice my grounding is, is a five-step rule. So what I do, I look at five things that I can see, four, three, four things that I can hear, if possible, three things I can taste, two things I can touch, and then say one thing nice to myself. You cannot help but be in the present moment when you're practicing that grounding technique because you're surrounding yourself with 
uh, stimuli that is in front of you or right here, as opposed to being in your mind and you are going down the rabbit hole of overthinking. So again, nine things to notice throughout the day. Once you ground yourself and you are in the present moment and you're aligned, the first thing is, is how you speak to yourself. This could be kind of heavy, meaning because you can say anything you want to yourself, but nobody hears it, but you hear it, your subconscious hears it. So that's why it's very careful what you say to yourself, because you think that, oh, I'll just say something negative, but oh, I'm joking, or I'll just say it just to say it, but your subconscious does not know. Your subconscious does not know at all. So that's why it's very careful. You have to be very careful on what you say to yourself. Um, sometimes if I get up, I'm like, oh, I'm just so big. Oh, my, my hair is not I'm having a bad hair day. Yeah, it probably is true. But I found myself at times that I would concentrate more on the negative as opposed to the positive or, oh. All my gray hairs are coming in. Well, guess what? I have a lot of hair. I should be grateful for my hair. And this is all my hair. The people who know me know this is all me. So it's about how I speak to myself and concentrating on the positive things as opposed to the negative. And again, if anything sounds familiar, make sure comment in the section and let me know what your thoughts are on it. This is huge. What or who you are prioritizing. <laughs> this comes into the people pleasing and putting yourself, uh, almost sacrificing yourself to make someone else feel comfortable. So I'm going to give a lot of story times throughout this, this stream that I'm doing. All right. So I had experienced this conversation with an individual and they were doing some shady shit. Let me keep it real. And I didn't like it, but it made me feel so uncomfortable. But to make myself feel better, I realized it was more about myself and not them. I wanted to let them know how what they were saying, what they were doing, how it was making me feel. Well, while I was halfway processing it, I realized what I'm about to say, and I wasn't going to go off. It was just expressing how I feel. I realized that it was going to make them comfortable. Oh, excuse me, uncomfortable. So then I started backpedaling. Well, how can I reword this? Because I know by me standing in my truth is going to make this individual uncomfortable. Well, the reality of it was I was prioritizing that individual as opposed to myself. Because it's something that they were doing, which was very, it was very malicious, and they definitely had some malintent behind it. But I was still prioritizing them as opposed to how I was feeling. So that's why it's really care. You have to be really mindful on who and what you prioritize, because when you do that, you are literally sacrificing yourself. And then we go into the realm of weak boundaries or even porous boundaries where we're, we are absorbing, well, they may feel this way. They may feel that way. I don't want, well, what about our own feelings? What about our own priorities, right? Let's move on to number three. Think about which emotions are you experiencing? <laughs> this was really interesting. I had to think about this because at first it wasn't, it just wasn't clicking. But I also learned that sometimes when I, I went back in my memory banks and again, I'm going to give an example about myself. So I went into memory banks because I could not understand this number three, which emotions am I experiencing? So I thought about one of the streams that I did with LaDana uh, Manhurt-Smith. She was a phenomenal procrastination coach. 
and she was talking, you feel overwhelmed. It can your body can react to it. Right here, you you can have your thoughts, but you also do have a physical, visceral, physical reaction. So I noticed when I had this task at work, I was overwhelmed. So guess what my go-to was to do? Go take a nap. <laughs> I went to take a nap and I started thinking, why am I so sleepy? I would, throughout the day, I'm just going at it on the computer. But when I would hit this certain task, I would become so sleepy and I always wanted to go to bed. And I did. Well, then I brought it full circle and I said, oh, this is what it is, the emotions that I'm experiencing. So the emotions that I was experiencing with this project at work is because I was overwhelmed and I don't want to get into the details of it, but I was overwhelmed. Well, it was just easier for me to just literally power down like a computer and go to sleep. So I had to recognize, well, why am I feeling so sleepy and why am I feeling overwhelmed? And so I did a deep dive and I thought about, it came down to feeling insecure about the work. I'm just being honest. And that's what the emotions that I was experiencing. So I found it very interesting how I can go from how um, I'm thinking to the physical reaction to the internal emotional action. And it all came down to I was feeling very insecure about the work. But I would not have been able to do that if I wasn't already uh, reset my body on grounding myself. I have to do it in the morning and set my intentions for the day. Other than that, it is very easy for me to go on autopilot. Very easy. And I have to start, I have to reset myself throughout the day as well. Just a little FYI. All right, let's go to number four. How are you treating your body? Mm. So I can move out of the emotional realm and if we go out of that emotions and we can even just go to the physical part um have there been times when you you knew you should have gone to the gym or taken that walk or whatever physical activity you like to do but you decided not to and you know you need to lose 80 pounds in 30 days like myself Notice how you're treating your body. Um, that can be if you are excessively drinking, smoking, no judgment, do what you do, but just be cognizant on how you're treating your body. I was talking to this, who was I? I was, oh yeah, I, I was at a function and this nurse was talking about how it can be challenging for her because she was talk, recently talking to a diabetic patient of hers and the patient, he his numbers were so off the chart and she was telling him, hey, you cannot drink the 15,000 Cokes within one day and expect your sugar, your blood sugar levels to be uh, normal. You, you just cannot do it. And he said, well, I like I like this Coke or whatever the caffeine was. And she said, yeah, but you have to you have to realize how you're treating your body. It will feel good going down at the moment, but how you're treating your body in the long run, it is not going to work. And this also comes with if you have to take medications, I understand there's always a holistic approach, but you know, sometimes if you have to take meds. You have to take your medication. Mm. Number five, what boundaries are you struggling with? For me, this goes back to number two on what we just talked about, about who or what you're prioritizing. So um, boundaries, mm. you know, I love, I love talking about boundaries. 
<laughs> I love talking about boundaries because it's a new topic for me that I have embraced because I did not grow up with boundaries. Boundaries were constantly violated when I was growing up. Um, it was the verbal and emotional boundaries. It was, it was not good, but I didn't see it. I did not see it, so I didn't experience it, which made sense for me being uh, an adult and boundaries were being violated and it would go right over my head. I had no idea. So if you feel that uh, saying no or prioritizing someone else over your own feelings and you feel very uncomfortable holding boundaries or a lack of boundaries altogether, you may want to think about that. And people, you know, sometimes if you do have a little awareness, of a lack of boundaries, but it's difficult. You may want to, again, ground yourself and see, well, where is that coming from? I know with myself, with, with some instances where I lack boundaries is because of, of uh, being a former recovering people pleaser. I want to make everyone happy. So I'd rather just sacrifice my own self and have very weak boundaries just so everybody can get along. And that's not always the best thing. You know, I always go back to um, how I grew up and what I experienced hearing and seeing. So, but guess what? That's not the case right now. Um, and I'm still working on it. And people that I know, they're also working on it. And it's a beautiful thing. But a lot of us had to ground ourselves in the moment. And so something was said or doesn't feel right. And that's when that self-awareness can just pop right in. No, we're going to hold a boundary here. Let's go to number six. What are you spending your energy on? Mm. This could be so vast. I've really thought about this. This could be spending your energy on um, being a workaholic. Sometimes look, people look at that as a badge of honor. Work, 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 work. Or spending your energy on your kids. Which I'm not saying is a bad thing, but I'm talking about being fully engrossed in your kids or your relationships. And then it comes to a point where you lose yourself. And then you wake up one day and you're like, what the hell? Who the hell am I? What the hell am I doing? Why am I here? What's the meaning of life? What's my purpose? What's my passion? But we spend so much time on our energy on other people, things, and being, excuse me, doing as opposed to being. You don't know who you are. So always, always try to work on sense of self. All right, here we go. Number seven, whether you are showing up authentically. <laughs> this is interesting. I had to think about this as well on how it showed up for me, myself. Um, and I talked to some other people about this. And a lot of feedback I received was um, not showing up in or at work authentically. And it's so funny how all of these topics, these points that I'm mentioning, these pillars, they all somewhat intertwine and interweave with each other because I, um, one person said that they did not hold any boundaries, so they couldn't show up authentically at work, and they showed up as a superwoman at work. So they said, oh, yeah, you need me to do this project? Okay. And piling on the work, as opposed to showing up authentically and saying, hey, this doesn't work for me. My workload is full. Or a huge topic is not showing up authentically in our relationships. 
and it goes back to having poor boundaries, lack of bound, weak boundaries, and we we lose ourselves in our relationships, and then we don't show up authentically because we want to be in a relationship, even if it's a damn trauma bond, just to say that we have someone that we will sacrifice our own self and put it on the back burner and put on that mask so that we show up inauthentic. Meanwhile, we know damn well that the relationships that we've been in just does not work. It really does, it's not good for our soul. But let's, we're gonna stop all that, that self-sacrifice and the sabotaging. All right, here we go. Number eight. I wanted to do number eight and number nine at the same time. because This is really grand for me. It is, it is, what are you grateful for? Mm. That warms my heart because when you show up with a mindset of gratitude, ultimately it makes you um, full of hope. Joy more, more than anything, gratitude. And I'm not talking about just what you can read in the Bible and you're grateful for that. I'm talking about everyday, everyday encounters you may have going throughout your day, what you're grateful for. You can be grateful for the trees that you see. It, you know, sometimes nature gives people a sense of peace and calming. You can be grateful for your family. And I'm, is this my God? I'm not talking about these toxic ass family members. I'm not talking about these toxic ass older people. I'm talking about people who are good for our soul, who are in alignment with how we feel and our own personal positive core values. I'm talking about great gratitude for that. Uh, Gratitude that you can show up in your own authentic self. Gratitude that you can say no. Just the fact of saying no, that can be huge for someone. And then taking it a step further, gratitude without feeling guilt or diminished guilt. And also being grat uh, having gratitude and being grateful that you can say yes in certain instances. Put in the comments what you are grateful for. What what do you show gratitude for? What makes you happy? Sometimes, sometimes people get out of bed and they put their first foot on the ground. That's enough gratitude for them. I think it's wonderful. I love it. All right, uh, it's time for me to get up on out of here. You all, let me know what you what you think, and uh, we can talk about this further in our Facebook Facebook group. Our our private Facebook group, and you can share in there also some things that you are grateful for. If you all have any topics you'd like me to discuss while we're in full swing of season five of Black Girls Getting Their Shit Together, inbox me, email me, DM, do all of the above, call, text, whoever has my numbers, and we can get all into it, you know, because we're all about the mindset of growth. We're all about the mindset of progress. All right, let me get up on out of here. You all have a great evening, and I'll see you at the next talk. This for the queen, sisters manifesting their dreams. Get your cream by any means, and being with self esteem. Beauty supreme, and Buddha walk so mean. The way you fit in them jeans, you eat your cornbread and greens. Dance or a doctor, red wine or vodka. Redesign your spot and redefine your mantra. Retwist your locks and realign your chakras. Doing your squats and getting closer to God, huh? Brunching with your squad or taking a girl's trip. Adjust your crown, you guys give to the world, sis. Celestial body, drink your water. Meditate, sun kiss goddess, heavenly order. Levitate, tribe of Ashanti. Black girl magic, melanin popping. Whether you ratchet or lavish, whether you bougie or savage, you a gift and a treasure. You got to love a black girl getting a shift together. Black girls are getting they shift together. These black girls getting they shift together, man. These black girls are getting they shift together. These black girls getting they shift together, dog. We are real